Prof, I think you are muted. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Anya, for the reminder. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, how are you today? Uh, how are you guys today? It's, I believe that now it's 12 o'clock and it's a lunch time. But uh, by the way, you can you, you feel free to have your lunch during this uh, webinar. So welcome to this online webinar for getting to know more about the engineering. So the topic today uh, that we mainly focus is about the future of the engineer in the new normal. So how we are writing a new models and how we make the impossible possible with the engineering standards. So do engineers make the impossible possible? So you may have a questions came into your minds about uh, what is the new normals? So now the hit topic is all about the COVID-19. And I believe that now we already have how many days? If about 464 days, we are already in the MCO in Malaysia. All right. Indeed, the engineering professions won't be exempted from the COVID-19 job fallouts. But these effects can be just like temporarily. And so from the new normal to the new future, more engineers actually will be needed than ever before when the world returns to a semblance of the normalcies. This is because the current crisis has accelerated the merchant's adoptions of the enabling technologies. If you know that many educations nowadays, because we are in the education lines, when you come to your kids, your siblings, your cousins, when they go to your um, uh, the school, they cannot go to the school, but they have their digital learnings, uh, distant learnings, which is using the digital interventions uh, to learn their subjects to, to attend the classes through online. So this is all about the technology and this is so much important importance when we come to this um, pandemic situation and we realize that because of this pandemic situation make us to know that it's really important to have the technologies so how does the technologies will be linked to the engineering okay so the new future is embracing more science and the essential technologies and encouraging roots into the engineering so when coming out of this COVID-19 what will the new normal look like and how will we get there as an engineer? So hopefully these two questions, you will make you find out some useful information today. So let me introduce myself. I am your speaker today. I'm Dr. Wong and I'm from the School of Engineering and Physical Science. And uh, basically my major is in the chemical engineering. So this is all my qualifications and I'm a PhD holder. And also I have uh, the teaching excellence in my uh, chemical engineering uh, awards. And my research uh, more focusing on the micro technologies, additive manufacturing and the polymer science for the water research and the applications. OK. So here's the first questions to you guys. Why do we need engineers in the modern world? So take about a few seconds and the answer is can be quite simple. So how do we find out this answer? Let's watch the next video and you'll find out those answer reflecting why the engineer is so much important in our life.
All right. So from the videos, I believe that we all agree that um, the engineers are playing a key role to make a sustainable future, to making a different life in the future, unlocking the door for impossible to possible. So especially, there are many innovative and technologies may not be happens without the engineer. So seriously, this is true. So if we focus on the Malaysia transformation starting from 1957, when I when I was uh, haven't born yet, <laughs> but uh, when since 1957 to 1990, if you look at the chart here, we can see that in the beginning we are more focusing about the agriculture based economy. So in this level, we are made, uh, we have the basic input factors that is basically the land and the labors. But when we after 1990, uh, we will start to uh, uh, have the more focused area in the manufacturing space economy. So that basically we will enhance our infrastructures and we will have more institutional supports for this manufacturing uh, for boost up the economy based on the manufacturing. So up to 2001 to 2020, we can see that we are in the innovation led economies. So this is where we are starting to harness things, the emerging technologies. We are finding more talents in the Malaysia's uh, throughout the uh, economic transformations. And you can start to see that we are already in the industrial uh, revolutions in the 4.0 version. And we come to 2020 onwards, we are more to humanizations in the economic age, which is focused the use of the innovation and also how we collaborate and share our knowledge to the international platform. So can you see that from the agriculture based economies from since 1957 until now, you can see the changes of the Malaysia's that is more to increasing in the technology of the complexity. So if you look at that, actually Malaysia enterprises are actually taking steps to modernize and uh, modernize their infrastructures but there are many still grapplings with the lack of the niche talent skills in key emerging technology, such as what you have known about is the Internet of the things. So, for example, like uh, you can see from some of the news here. So, for example, like Putrajaya actually this, uh, having the smart city with operated the IoT, which is the Internet of the things. And then so our Malaysia are already in the journey to the digital innovations. And some of the news or article you can find from the stars that is mentions that Malaysia is on, on the right track towards the technology and the digital transformation. So we can see Malaysia has um, has already in the in the pathway of developments of on all these technology, but we need to invest in customize the talents development programs that can upskill the employers or the workers for the long term. So there is always a need for the skilled workers and the demands for specialists in the science, technology, engineering and mathematics, the STEM, we call the STEM. The S is stand for science, the T we stand for technology, E is the engineering and the maths is the M. So the trend you can see that is actually is increasing. So one question is, do we have sufficient talents in Malaysia, in all key economic sectors. That's the main point, OK? So if you look at the Malaysia key economic sectors, as I mentioned just now, and the innovations capacity, so based on the Malaysia key economic sectors and the innovations capacity, this graph is identifying the strengths and the weaknesses in each industry based on their dynamic capabilities. So for example, like uh, the absorptive, adaptive, and the innovative. So you can look at the graph here, look at the graph here, you can see that the top three industry with the highest knowledge contained, which is at this part, okay, which is at this part, which is a higher knowledge contained with the percentage of the high percentage of the innovator. These are the automotive chemicals, petroleum and pharmaceuticals and also the IT. So this is where you, uh, you need the high knowledge content and you need more innovations uh, for this to be grow. In contrast, there are three industries with the lowest uh, knowledge contains, which is the lowest part. 
that is the agriculture, the wood-based products, and the transportation services and health services. So this is where we need to improve because we have the very low innovations here. But if you see that we only have 80%, we are not really like it's a growing trend. Okay, so in all these parts, we need the engineer as the innovators to boost the, the techniques. So for example, do you need the engineer for the agriculture? Yes, we need. Okay, do we need engineers for the health science? Yes. So there's many, many criteria or many, many job opportunities for us. And our job means responsibility is how do we create ideas, how we solve the challenges, how we innovate. All right. So if we map things, the knowledge content against the level of innovations, the 21 industry in this chart can be divided into four different distinct category groupings. So the first one will be the pay sectors. So the pay sector is which means that we are already in the lead. OK, we are already in the lead and we have the high percentage of the innovations and but we need to improve more for this area. Second level we call is as the adapters. We we are adopting uh, to the technologies from the others. OK, so we are adapting the technology and which uh, we have the um, our innovators, which is range from 60 percent to 70 percent. And the next one will be the uh, imitators. So imitators is normally is uh, we are using or um, copy other people actions. And these are the way that we need to improve more about the innovators so we, so that we can have our own products. So we are not really using other people's uh, uh, words to help us to, to in your uh, uh, in this industry. And the last but not least, which is the lackest, and this is the ones who already slowly develop, but not enough yet. OK, so it's not enough in the mood. So in order to move forwards, uh, we need to find a balance between the push and pull factors because we need to elaborate more innovators by addressing all these challenges that face by the um, especially at the area, which is the imitators industry and the industry that has belonged to the laggers. So science and innovations are really the key to our economy and the social and also the environmental futures. So the role of the engineering in these transformations is critical. If we further look down to these pages, OK? So from here, we can see that in an advanced technology world, we need the engineers to bring the ideas into the realities. So by applying the, the mathematics and the science, engineer will develop the solution to the world's biggest technical issues. So in short, the engineer is we change, we create, and we solve. So based on the McKinsey Global Institute analysis, we are now in the directions of the uh, industrial 4.0, and there's a growing trend towards the automation and also the data exchange in the technology and process. So what do you mean by the industry 4.0? Because we always mention this. So industry 4.0 actually is, means the use of the modern smart technology. So we are create and apply the technology, which are highly demanded to monitor and control the production. So if you look at the current data, we have six out of 10 occupations, have more than 30% of the activities that are technically automated. So by 2030, 800 million people could lose their jobs or 375 million will change their job and the expertise, which means the demands for the middle and the low skill occupations will significantly decline. So engineer is not the middle and low skills occupations. It's already in the high level professional skill. So we need more this kind of people because and many of the people that when when we when we are uh, through up this industry 4.0, they will slowly to move forward to the professionals uh, degree. So which means that if we follow um, to the industry 
all those middle and low skill occupations will decline. All right, so based on the current economy transformation, maybe you will foresee that the STEM, which is just my mentions, the STEM, is now significantly become more important in the transformation. So let's give you a very simple example. OK, so industry needs more chemical engineers in automation. OK, why chemical engineering we need in the automations? Because the process control community, we can do so much more with the insights into how you run the process, how you run the plants for safety and productivity. So we need to keep this automation system to work fine. So chemical engineers have the knowledge to how to control the process. So for example, like mechanicals and all the automations engineer, they will basically uh, focus how we design, how we manufacture the, mach uh, the machine. So if we talk about the automations, uh, so you will say that um, since that you say we will lose job and then so we will have changed job. So do you think that our job as an engineer will be replaced by the robot? In fact, we should see it different perspective. Why don't we ask ourselves who built this automation system? That's the engineer. Without the automations, without the engineer, we don't have the automation system. All right. So our job is to create and also the innovation. So this is very important for us to think that actually the technology that engineer created is to augment the economy, so to enhance the economy, but they can't replace our engineering job. All right. So if you want to know more, whether you want to be a chemical engineer or the mechanical engineer, this is depends on your preference. OK, this is depends on your preference. But I have to tell you that chemical engineers will not be replaced by the robots because now the job rank of the chemical engineering, we have 700, uh, 700 jobs. And we are already ranked at the 77 that is needed based on the statistic analysis. And the mechanical job we, is, a, is a, the ranking is about 53 out of the 700. So we actually is placed at the higher ranking means that these jobs are less likely to be replaced. And we need more of these innovators um, to be in the development for the industrial revolutions of 4.0. So if you imagine your Malaysia in 2015, based on these pictures, so Malaysia in 2050, it's expected to be developed a nation driven by the science, technology and the innovations. So you can see that we may have the energy flooring, we may have the green buildings, and you can see that we have much more infrastructures already in the green building concept. And then we can also have the space station that's possible to be happens. So Malaysia, if you want to develop into a developed country, we need more engineers to help us. So based on the United Kingdom's and the Malaysia's data, OK, so I compare these two countries because we are Malaysia's and I'm represent from Harrow Woods and Harrow is a UK uh, university. So I compare this to country, which is much more comparable. So due to the growing trend in the automations, we, we need more. Um, there's more needs to be done um, to address the gaps uh, in the STEM skill. So STEM education, it actually directly impacts the technology sector because this is where we are training our next generations. We are giving them the required education to drive the innovation. So if you look at the United Kingdoms and the Malaysia's, we can see that, for example, like this, because they have the shortage of the engineers, so the Institute of the Engineer and Technology has warned that uh, the shortage of the engineering skill actually will cost 27 billion pounds each year. So you can imagine how much they have to spend in order to build their technology because they have the shortage of the engineering skill. So they need to buy. So they need to invest more. So this is why um, that's the that's the needs for us to go through the engineering pathway to help to to help for the developments. So for Malaysia side, 
we are still facing a shortage of the engineers in terms of the employability and retentions of the talents within the engineer sectors and companies. And do you imagine, can you imagine that we only have less than 4% of all engineers in the Malaysia are professional engineers. So we have many engineering students, we have many engineer uh, graduates, but if you want to really to talk about the professional engineering, we, we professional engineer, which is the chartered engineer, we only have 4% or maybe less than that throughout the whole Malaysia. It's a, such a quite worrying uh, statistic, and this is what I can say. So in the future, due to Industry 4.0, we need to, we will have 75% of the job opportunities will be all required with the STEM skills. And then, can you imagine how important is it now? Because we have lack of the STEM talents or the professional engineer. And you can see from when I compare with the UK and Malaysia, we can see that this is not just happened in Malaysia, but it's a worldwide issue. All right, so we can see that how many of the kids, how many of the 50 years old kids they have, which is 42% that are not proficient in maths, 35% of them are not proficient in science and 35% of them are not proficient in technology. So this is something that we need to look into. All right, so do you think the engineer jobs, is it available? Since that we need more, but do you think that we have the job opportunities that is everywhere? So in the critical occupations list, the COL that I that I get from the uh, Talent Corp, is uh, the COL is a set of uh, occupation in demands that identifies the skills imbalance across the 18 economic sector in Malaysia. So it's aimed to be the primary instrument to promote better coordinations of the human capital policies aim at attracting, nurturing, and retaining the talent. So I have picked out the top uh, six uh, occupations that are really in need here, which is the critical one. We have the industrial production engineer. We have the civil engineers. We have the mechanical engineer, electricals, and also the tele telecommunication engineer. They are all very important at this stage. So actually, who is engineer? So if you're not very familiar with the engineer, let me watch you through the descriptions uh, of, of the role of the engineers. So based on this chart, uh, this all the diagrams, you can see that these are the engineers without reg regards to the race, re without regards to the nationality, the color, the age and the genders. From this picture, we can see that the engineers are work on the construction site, the chemical productions, uh, looking at the blueprint, which is at the second, we're looking at the blueprints or process flow diagram, or the instruments diagrams or constructions plan layout. So these are the jobs that will be uh, handled by the engineer. So it looks like everyone in these pictures looks like very professionals, like feeling happy, right? So do you think that engineers are always work on the site? So when, when, when I was young, I always think that the engineer is like always need to work on the sites, always need to work under uh, exposed under the sunlight. But actually the answer is no. It simply depends on your employer, simply depends on your nature of the business and the type of the engineering work that you do. So like my students, some of them, they work in the office for the plant design, and the safety project, they will only need to travel to the site when there is necessary. So this is just the uh, imaginations of how the engineers that you look like in the generator, but in fact, that's not. This is just an example. In fact, you can do it in many, many, many different uh, uh, areas. So the words of the engineer is actually derived from the words ingenuity and also the cleverness, which means that we can create and or regenerate. So the engineer job is use the force and materials of the nature to solve the needs of the humanity. Because we talk about the humanizations, let's economy in the age. So this is how we importance for the engineers that really need to uh, solve the needs of the humanity. So as an engineer, we need the skills as the following. We need the science, 
that uh, science skills, science knowledge, the mathematics, the creativity, and also the communication. So there are five interesting to know about engineer. So maybe I, I want to know um, some of you in the attendees here. So we have um, Asfas, JC, Jitsuan, and uh, Ratmash and Sasi. Maybe can you tell me uh, more about what is your first uh, impressions about engineer? Okay, you, you may just type in your chat box so I can just have uh, interactions with you guys. Then so what is your first impressions about engineer? I believe that you have hardworking. Yes, we need to be hardworking to be an engineer. And then so how about Zichuan is typing now? Yeah, let's Zichuan. Nerdy. Hey, no, do you, do you think I look nerd? <laughs> correct stuff to solve problem. Yes, correct Zichuan. Yes. And I'm waiting for uh, Arnya, and yeah, it's, and yeah, I want to type something, right? Innovative, correct? Innovative. That's a very good answer from 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 Pat Mash. Sorry if I if I can't read your pronounce your names correctly, but that's the truth. Innovative, correct? Any any more any more from the floor? Like uh, Sassy and JC, maybe as far as you can talk more, so I can uh, have more ideas from what you guys think about engineers. Yes, make our life easier. Correct. So actually, if if you still remember that we watch some of the videos, especially when. Uh, I'm not sure whether you have watched the videos that are uh, not the videos, the movie they called the Interstellar It's about the aerospace. And uh, there's uh, another movie called The Martians as another movie that called about engineering the aerospace. So actually, do you think that it's possible for us uh, as a humans that living in the Earth that can live in the Mars and how we travel to the Mars? We need the aerospace. We need the rockets and all these are really what engineers do yes the star shape yeah so that's why it's a very important for having engineer and we need more of these people uh, in our life so this is how can realize our Malaysia visions in 2050 so this is how we can achieve the objective and how we achieve the objective for the Malaysia's uh, revolutions and uh, 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 on from the 2020 onwards so thanks for your answer and it's very it's very good and it's very true. So who is are the engineers that actually uh, find interesting things that you can understand about engineer? First, engineer drive our economy forward and give you the power to make the difference. So this is how engineering need to do. So if you know that COVID-19 outbreak has changed the economy landscape in terms of the productions level, household spending, investments and labor markets. So in the third quarter 2020, the growth of was uplifted by the rebounded performance of the manufacturing sector. So if we want to refer back to the normal condition, so the service and the manufacturing sectors remains as a key driver of the supply size with the combinations of the share is about 79.9% to the economy. So these services and manufacturing sectors is the economy driver. So where we have placed those uh, talents, mostly other uh, engineers in those services and the manufacturing sectors. So, and that is how we contribute to the economy. Second, Engineers are in demand because they can earn a good money. <laughs> so this is everyone wants to have that. But believe that earn a good money that can be possible if you have a, a certain experience level. So there's a tab tabulated uh, salary range for the engineering disciplines and I will show you in the next few slides. 
to to let you to understand more about the the pri uh, the the salary range for each engineer. Next, engineers has given a major impact to the world. So, for example, I believe that uh, you guys have watched uh, Facebook, you have uh, you have Twitters, you have uh, the uh, Instagram, and I believe that you will see some of the pictures, videos is talk about the three D printed houses. So, how we can we build the house with a three D printed uh, 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 technique? So. If you see that, how engineer giving the magic impact, you already see it based on the 3D printer houses. Previously, we need a lot of uh, uh, um, measures, uh, how to say that constructions to build a, a very nice house and solid and firm and steady. But these all the constructions will take a very long time to just to build a condo, to just build a houses or housing area it can be like taking months or taking years so 3d printer houses can be built in like maybe just one day so you can see that the how additive manufacturing could change the world of our homes are built besides the iot that i mentioned just now the internet of things and they are actually currently they are using for the smart water system they will try to tag how what is the turbidity of the water, how's the water look like, what is the what is the COD, what is the chemical oxygen demand in the in the water. All these can be done by the Internet of Things, and we can remove it from the uh, the other side. So, for example, I want to remove to test how's the how's the performance or how's the situations in the river uh, Selangor. So, but I'm in the KL, but I want to test it. So I can use the Internet of Things to remove and to remove the testing. So this is something what engineers can giving the major impact to the world. So the next, which is engineering, is interesting and allow you to use your creativity every day. So this is what attracts many people to a career in engineering in the first place because it's a fascination for how things work. So engineers are facing problems than never seen before. So this is how, uh, what I can call it as a challenging mind games. And that is make our life so interesting if you are becoming as an engineer. And the last but not least is this one we call as engineers, we give you the chance to work with the talented people. So these are all the five key things. The first, drive the economies. We have the demand, earn good money, the major impact, creativity, and also how you can communicate and interact, work with the talented people. So where engineers are actually work, we understand what the attributes are for an engineer, but so what are the work sectors for engineers? So just now we see that all engineers, the pictures are working on the site, working on the construction, looking at the blueprint, looking at the, uh, the process flow diagram. But actually, what are the work sectors for engineer? So these are the work sectors for engineer. There are the agriculture, environmental, manufacturing, oil and gas, sales and products, constructions, transportations, trainings, and teaching profession. So the teaching profession is what where I'm doing now. So this teaching professions as an engineers, I'm doing as a teaching profession uh, uh, lecturers in the uh, in Harawards. So this is a part of the work sectors for engineer. OK, so next one. So if you look at here, we can see that we also can work on the research. In the lab development, and this is how we design. And we have the production and testing sales, even though engineers can be a sales engineer. All right. And the operation engineer, construction engineer, management engineer, and also the education. So this are, you can see the engineers, the work range uh, are very wide. So there are four main roads that we can consider for the general career professions with our engineer degree of major. So we have engineering, executive, education, or all the research and the development line. So for example, if you look at the engineer or executive, 
six to ten or uh, engineer is a one to five years uh, five years experience. After that, you will promote it to become a senior engineer after six year experience. After six year experience, you will become as a staff engineer. Then you become after uh, 15 years, you will more to the principal engineer and more than 20 years experience, you'll become the custodian engineer. So if you are going to the executive line, so the executive line will more to the senior manager, senior manager and the general manager. So if I go through the educations or the research, the first of all, we will go to the uh, lecturer. And after that, if you have six to 10 years, we will move on to assistant professor associate and professor but i want to uh, just to mention that all the years here is just a uh, reference it cannot be like a it's not like a real data it's just like a references for you so for me uh impossible because i'm already 13 years so impossible i have 15 years all right so it's something like it depends on the country how their educations uh, depends on their uh, the country and the institutions, how is the progress career progression in the particular uh, institution. So it really depends on your year experience. If you have six year experience, doesn't mean that you can cannot be a uh, manager. It, it really depends how strong is the candidate. If you have uh, five years, impossible, uh, uh, impossible for you to be a staff engineer if you have enough or sufficient experience. So it's really just a reference for you. So don't take this as a guideline. Uh, don't, um, don't take this as a guideline that you will have like uh, only six years that you will only become a senior engineer, but it really depends your experience, really depends your own capability. So this is just a reference, uh, uh, cannot be like a, guide, a, a true guideline for you. There are various branches of engineer. Okay, so uh, traditionally we have four branches of engineering. They have chemical, civil, electrical, and mechanical. So nowadays uh, there are many more other areas of specializations. For instance, under chemical engineering itself, the chemical engineer have a broader range of the job prospect to be involved, such as like uh, biochemicals, gas, bioprocess, and polymer. So other than that, we have the civil engineer, architecture, building, survey, and structural. We have the electrical, and then we have the mechanical engineering that we can have a full list of a different sub um, specific area under the mechanical engineer. And last but not least, under other engineering field, we have mechatronic, petroleum, environmental, and so on. So how much does the engineer earn? So uh, for example, like uh, when you talk about executive progression line, chemical engineer can earn up to average 20,000 when you have 15 plus years working experience in Malaysia. So for example, if this is chemical, you could able to earn more than 20,000 when you have 15 plus years of the experience. And as I say, this is just a reference. It cannot be like a guideline that truly that you have to wait for 15 years, then you only have 20,000. It can be less than that. Okay, it can be less than that. So this is the salary survey, okay, based on the year 2018, and it, it also really depends on your company nature. So if let's say your company nature is a manufacturing or oil and gas uh, industry, the salary can actually up to 4,000 to 5,000 if uh, based on the fresh grade. Okay, so based on the fresh grades, for, for example, one of my students, uh, one of my students, uh, uh, he's working at uh, Intel, he's working in the Intel, but uh, uh, he just having a fresh grade and then he, st uh, he started salary is about 5,000. 5,000 as a fresh grade is considered quite high in Malaysia. Okay, it's going to be quite high. Uh, the difference is because he got the MNG, the MNG uh, electrical engineer. So the MNG, because it's a master of engineer, they will keep you up to the one level up compared to other bachelor. So this is the benefit of having the Master of Engineering. All right, so this is the general ideas of, for you to know what is the chemical engineer, the salary range for uh, and also for others engineer. So this is just a guideline that you can snap a pictures for you to for your future use. All right, so 
Let's take a look. What are the major differences, okay, between the chemical engineer, mechanical, civil, and electrical engineer? So you can you can see that from this slide, um, we will take out the major four different branches. As I mentioned, the mechanical engineer basically is the engineer that deal with the design, construction, and the use of machine. And chemical engineer is basically more to concern with the design and the operations, industry chemical plants while the civil engineer will more to construction and also the buildings, roads, bridges and other large scale structure. And E&E &E, very straightforward, it deal with the applications of the electrical system. So these are the few examples that when you are becoming engineer, these are the few diagram where I mentioned the blueprint or the process flow diagram that you will see as an engineer. So these are the blueprint and the process flow diagrams or any others a diagram that you possible to see uh, as a chemical engineer. When you're mechanical engineer, you will see that's a difference. It's more like a structural design like here. And when you come to the diagram that uh, for the electrical, this is more to the electrical system. And the civil engineer, we have more to a constructions play layout. So uh, in EPS, which is our school, basically we are more focusing about the mechanical, chemical and electricals. I believe that you have already known what are the roles as a mechanical engineering. They're basically um, based on the manufacturing, chemicals and also the infrastructures uh, industry. And these are the example that's how mechanicals work is look like. For chemicals, it's more to the raw materials, how we control, how we control the raw material process and change it to the valuables or desirable products and how we sell it to the market. And this is the chemical engineering diagram that you look like the research and development and also the engineer work in the plant. And last but not least will be the E and E. There's more to the applications on the electricals. And you can see that this is our E and E working um, in the areas that's from based on these pictures. So in the current market, apart from electrical engineering and the computer science engineering, if you break up breaking down further, you can see that 60% of the companies actually they have reported we have the shortage of the 60% of the electrical engineering and we have shortage which is 35% of the qualified mechanical engineer and we have 30% shortage of the material science or the chemical engineering according to the survey. So based on the Malaysia Ministry of Higher Education, mechanical engineering is the most highly demand in the future and projected about 24% uh, increments from the five to 10 years, all right? So, so chemical engineering, we have to um, is projected to grow 4% from 2019 to 2029. While just as I mentioned about the mechanical, there's a projected about 24% of the increments from five to 10 years uh, uh, demand. And then last but not least is the electricals that's projected to grow about 9% in the coming years. So based on all these data, we can see that we, in order to meet the current and future needs of the industrial, the future has become as the drivers for change in the engineering education and the requirement of having the STEM talents. So we need more of this program to equip all these talents to prepare for the future. So here are some just relax to see some of the pictures to let you visualize what are the areas that are chemical, electrical, mechanical engineers can work in. So for example, like the constructions, you have some sort of air conditioning, ventilation, fluid piping system, and the fire protections are mostly mechanical engineering that can be work or the chemical engineer will be work. And this next one is about the transportations. Okay, these are the transportation. You can see that um, mostly the mechanical engineer, we have the major role on the transportation in practices or computational base work. So all these are the computational base work and how the innovation system um, uh, is generally planning, design and operations of this all transportation system. Next one, we have this and 
we call as a robotics and which is very interesting. So the robotics which is the current and the future direction due to the growing trend in automation. So this is another branch of the engineering for mechanical engineering that we help with the aspect of the robotics uh, technology. So mechanical engineer will work on the design, develop, build, test, and also the mechanical sensors and devices. And also will work with the electrical engineering to build on the electrical devices to build into the, all this arm. All right, next one, the military and the defense. So the military defense is uh, something that we need to look at to have the uh, engineers to focus on the developments and the productions uh, of the technology that is used to ensure the national security and maintain the stability of the governments and the nations to the world. So it's important can see that engineer is not just working in the in the plant. It also can be work in the military and the defense. Next is the oil and gas where you can see that you have seen many oil and gas plants outside like Petronas, like Shell. This is all basically you will first in your impression is chemical engineer. So chemical engineer will mainly focus on the design, the process, the control, the safety and the environment. And you may be interested to ask uh, why, uh, what is the difference between petroleum engineer and what's the difference between the, the chemical engineer? So it really depends on the how uh which uh which process they are you are working in so for example camping engineer um it's work more onto the downstream process while the petroleum engineer is more working on the upstream so if you look at all the onshore platform is where the petroleum engineer will um, mostly work on that because they want to take the crude oil and how the crude oil to process is more to chemical engineering to process in the downstream parts Okay, so, so what is the, uh, if, you, if you want to ask me that, if you want to go petroleum engineer or chemical engineer in oil and gas, it really depends on your preference and your interest. So definitely chemical engineer will cover broadest range, including biomedicines, foods, electronics, and environment, while the, uh, while the petroleum will more to, uh, more direct specialized, as I can say, which do, uh, primary with the extraction of the crude oil, as I mentioned, and also the gas in the upstream process. So chemical downstream, uh, petroleum upstream. All right. So in oil and gas industry, chemical engineer will ensure the petroleum and the oil materials go directly into the gas tank and use the uh, correct uh, chemicals to get the crude oil into the usable forms. So that's uh, mostly that you can see in the oil and gas industry. Next one would be the renewable energy. So solar panels, all right. And then this is all the renewable energy normally where uh, chemicals, uh, mechanics, engineering, and also the e and &E that work together on the process, design, and manufacture. So apart from that, we have the manufacturing packaging and advanced materials. So this basically is more to the materials part. So where is mostly material science or mechanical engineering uh, engineers that we mostly work into the industry as well. So as I mentioned previously, um, chemical engineering can be covers broader range, including process, biomedicals, pharmaceutical foods, technology and thermal fluid. So we can work into in the different industry. So it's, it's same goes to other engineers like a mechanical engineers and E and E engineers um, that can be work in the process as a process engineer that can be work as a thermal fluid engineer. So in the future, for in order to become a competence engineer, so we need to have some of the skills here by 2030s here. So first of all, we need to make sure that we have the mental elastic resilience and complex problem solvings, and how can we have the critical thinking, creativity, people skills, do we have the STEM knowledge, do we have the SMAC, and also we, do we have the interdisciplinary knowledge. These are all so much important because engineering, if you want to say that if I want to have the problem skill, it's very important because we are not only find the effective solution, but we need to make sure and enable them to 
determine the root cause of the problem and prevent it from recurring. So apart from that, as an engineer, we need to enhance our people's skill because we need to communicate, we need to listen, speak, we need to observe and empathize. So you can see that actually we are not working alone. We are working in the team. We are working in the uh, in team management. So this is all uh, as a team. You need to make sure all of the engineers will equip with the creativity and the innovation how we think up new and exciting way to attack the problem and apply them to solve the problem. So in the new normals, we need to equip the resilient thinking and the emotional uh, intelligence skills. And also we need to have the innovative thinking. So if you look at this example, this is one of our students. They really, uh, what they do is they create using the 3D printings um, to help the medical lines during the pandemic situation. And you can see that actually we can do it for more than that. It's not just only about the 3D printing, but more than that in the future. So we have so many world challenges in the world for the sustainable development. And you can see from 1 to 17, these are all the world challenges that we need to face and we need more engineers to help us um, to solve some of the challenges, especially the SDG 9, the sustainable development goal, which is SDG 9, the innovations and the infrastructure, the sustainable city and the communities. And maybe we have the life below the water and also the climate action. Next. In order to be a leadership, we need to have, apart from the resilience, apart from innovations, apart from the emotional intelligence, we need the leadership. Because these leaderships as a future in the engineer, we should be brave enough to explore the darkness and discover the infinite power of our light from leading ourselves. And then, sorry, my slide is suddenly, okay, leading ourselves. And then we need to leading the teams and also leading the communities and eventually the enterprise. So this is where we should empower ourselves as a future engineer and equip yourself with a different skill and ready to face the world. So can we make the impossible possible? I think and I believe that we can't so empower yourself with all the talent skills, leading self, leading teams, leading communities, and also leading the enterprise. So this is how we need to make the impossible to possible. Thank you so much for your attention and believe that we have another four minutes. I'm not sure whether we have any Q&A sections that I believe that many of you may have some questions to ask. So that's all my presentation for now. So now I will leave it back to Anya. Anya, uh, is that the Q&A sections? Can we have some time for them to have a Q&A section? Yeah, I think we can. Uh, maybe um, let's have 10 minutes for any questions. You can on your mic or you can type it in the chat box. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, Asphal is uh, saying some things in the chat box. Maybe Asphal, do you want to start first? Okay, thanks. Uh, all right. Asfal has been asking one has asked one question. So can I ask if students who completed the HWN Engineering Foundations have been accepted into other units for first year? You means that uh, is that you means that if we have if you completed the engineer foundation in Haribo, is it possible to enter into other university? Is that means is that what you mean? Uh, yes, it's possible. It's possible. Once you finish your foundations, you can uh, you can uh, you can be accepted into other UK university. But I'm not really sure. And yeah, can you help me? Is it is it confirmed? 
as long as you have completed foundation, right? And yeah. And uh, yeah. I think let's uh, have the EC to answer this. Uh, okay. Hi everyone, I'm Chun Moi. So basically at the end of the foundation study, right, a student will be receiving the uh, certificate of higher education, which is actually recognized uh, everywhere. So yes, you are able to register or progress uh, the degree program at other university, subject to meeting the program requirement. Okay, yeah, the important thing is a subject to the meeting the requirement. Thanks. And then, yeah, so yeah, that's the important thing. Yeah. So just say that what is the difference between the Bachelor of Civil Engineering and the Mac MEng in the Civil Engineering? Okay, so uh, basically, uh, in different university, they have a difference uh, program names. For example, like uh, some of the some of the local university, they will use the Bachelor of Civil Engineering, and then the Bachelor in the local U or other university, they may be just uh, uh, use the Bachelor. It means four years study. But in Harvard is different. Harvard uh, or any UK university, they have the difference between the bachelor's and the MEng. So um, you only can use this uh, bachelor's uh, uh, MEng difference here is bachelor will need three years study, and MEng is four years. So the MEng four years studies in civil engineering is equivalent to the others bachelor's honors in the other university in Malaysia. So you have to be careful. Other university they have offers the uh, bachelor's of the civil engineering that could be four years, but ours in our program our name is MEng, which is um, mechanic uh, master of engineering. That is a four years program, and in Harrods the UK institutions bachelor is mean three years. So MEng in civil engineering normally will be recognized in Malaysia because it's a four years four years program but bachelor will not be recognized because it's a three-year program it's just like an affiliate engineer but it cannot be recognized as an accredited programs so jitrans uh are you clear with this do you uh do you clear about it did you am I answering your question so master of engineering is one level high than the bachelor's yes as i told you Monash University is uh, not UK University. They are more to Australians University base. And as I, as I say, UK system is different from other uh, system. So UK system is difference between the bachelor's and the master. So uh, we have the master of engineering and the bachelor of engineering and the master of engineering is under the uh, is still under the undergraduate program, but the name is different. So Master of Engineering is equivalent to the uh, to the Bachelor of Engineering that offer four years in other university. Yes, but as I say, the name of the Master of Engineering, some of the company, they are value it. And many of the companies that quite value the Master of Engineering because they already treat you in a different level. So the master of engineering, this is why the UK system, they have this name, which is uh, quite valuable, as I say. Is, is uh, for the for the marketing team, if I have mentioned anything incorrect information, maybe you can help me to, 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 to correct it. All right, thanks to me. If, let's say if I have mentioned anything wrong. All good, all good. Okay. All right. Is there any more questions? Uh, yes. Uh, that's OK. Uh, any more questions from the floor? All right, Aspa has mentioned that have there, have there been Hera foundations who have successfully managed to gain entry into uni other university in the UK for their first year? Uh, either uh, okay, either UCAS and understand this is theoretically proper, but has it actually been done? Many thanks. Um, I can't answer this question because I'm not really uh, <laughs> I'm not really taking the statistic data. Um, Chumay, do you have any specific example that students that stop the foundation here and then they move on to other university? 
Uh, yes, we do, but I don't have the specific uh, data as well, but we have students who submitted the UCAS application, which they actually progressed to the UK University directly. Example like Manchester University or uh, Southampton University in the UK. Yeah, so they go through the same process by submitting the UCAS application. So as mentioned just now, uh, at the end of the foundation study, students will be receiving the uh, certificate of higher education, which is actually recognized in the UK. Yeah, so I hope you understand. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Thanks, Asphalt. Is there any more questions from the floor? I, I found that uh, some of them, they are quite quiet, like JC, uh, Prashins and Sassi, do you have any things that you want to ask more about the engineering courses and, or any programs that is actually offered in Harawat? Edinburgh is Edinburgh is cool. Yeah, I've been to UK for years and it's uh, I studied there and it's actually quite cool, but it's very fun. So did you say that, can you tell me more the uh, outbound programs in the Harrow Awards in the MNG courses? So Jichen, do you, you want to understand about the overall programs in the Harrow Awards, especially for the MNG courses, right? Especially which engineering they are referring to? Jichen, which engineering that you are mostly want to refer to? Is it the civil? engineering or any other courses? Uh, I'm lagging. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Uh, okay. Sassi has mentioned, can clarify about the Go Globus program. I will leave it to our marketing team. Um, any, uh, about the Go Global programs, is the marketing team uh, has any consultants can help me to clarify uh, that? Yeah, yeah. So yes. perhaps I, will can, I can answer this. Okay, so for Sassi, uh, yes, we uh, have this Go Global program and uh, Inter-campus transfer is actually part of the uh, Go Global program. So meaning to say when student is uh, studying for our degree program, it's flexible for the student to decide when to uh, transfer. So you can choose to complete the four years or three years degree program in Malaysia, or it can be done partially in Malaysia and partially in Dubai or, or the UK campus. The tuition fee will be charged according to campus location. Yeah, because we implement the identical program, meaning to say uh, syllabus will be uh, the same, including assessment as well. So as long as uh, you are eligible to progress to the next level, meaning to say from year one to year two, and it shows that you are eligible to transfer already. You only need to submit the request to our student center and our international officer will actually assist on the visa application once the assessment result is uh, out. Is that clear? The chance I mentioned about the civil engineering. Okay, so that's a that's a challenge for me, but I never mind because I'm not uh, in EPS school. We are only have three majors. Um, engineering, uh, mechanicals, uh, electricals, and also the uh, and also the electric and mechanicals, but but I will guide you where you can find out what is the programs actually for the MNG project, um, MNG uh, engineering. So uh, let me share my screen here so you can easier to see. Um, okay, you can easy to see the stuff. Can you see my see my 
Can you easily to see my screen? Okay, so today I have shared you the link. Actually, you can go to the link here. So when you go to the link, when you click on it for, for engineering, you can see that uh, the, uh, the MNG civil engineering, when you scroll down all the way, you can come up to understand about the MNG. So first year, second year, and the third year, they will have the uh, similar courses uh, for the BNG and MNG. While we come to the fourth year, is for the MNG only that will include with the C uh, civil engineer professional design project and they have a dissertations as well. So as I say that, uh, because I'm not in the EP, uh, I'm not in the EG school. So actually in Harrow, we have two different school. Um, Harrow, what we have the EG, uh, we, uh, for engineering, we have un part under two different school. So mechanical, civil, uh, mechanical, uh, electrical and chemical were more to uh, EPS school and the EGs will have the civil engineering. So I would suggest you to look through the link here. And then uh, another thing is it's good for you to contact uh, the marketing and the marketing team will help you to contact with the civil engineering lecturers to understand more it because it's very difficult for me to represent the civil engineering as I'm not from their school. So maybe um, it's good for you to, to, to contact with them. Is that all right, Sichuan? There's a link for you to have a, you, you have a link for that. But basically, the difference between Master of Engineering and the Bachelor of Engineering, it's because of the UK system. But Master of the Engineering, some of the companies, they are very valuable with the, 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 the name of the degree that you graduated. Is that Zichuan? Is that all right? Okay, that's great. So any more questions from the floor? No problem. Hey, I think that we have might have run a little bit of overtime here. No problem. Uh, our next session is starting at two. Mm. Um, so I think if you have any more questions, you can leave your email or contact number in the chat box so that one of our education consultants can um, take it off on offline with you. Yes. So I would like to thank um, Assistant Professor Wang Wun Lung for his presentation. And thank you everyone for attending our open day today. Thanks, Aya. Yeah, thanks, Chumay, for having me. And thank you guys for uh, joining these sessions. And I'm so happy to see you guys and have a good weekend.